Wonderful. <laughs> All right. It's not. It's not scuffed anymore. Nice. We fixed it. Yeah. I think. This is the evolved form of a uh, hot tub meta. By the way, we're just on a couch. Yeah. Yeah. It's not no. a black couch though. Like on the other websites. True. <laughs> <coughs> the ever, you, know, you know what? You can't even access those websites without NordVPN. True. Is this thing <laughs> called Nemesis? <laughs> yeah, you, you need... Okay. All right. So, guys, uh, obviously, the setup is constantly changing every episode. Yeah, that's going to be our new thing. We're Every episode, we're going to be a different location. Yeah. So, every episode, it's a bit of a different location right now uh, while we figure some stuff out, I guess, for that. But hopefully... Eventually, it hits a, a reoccurring thing where we're just always doing it out of the, the T1 studio, and then that is the ideal. If you guys saw the tweet, the topics for today are mostly going to be centered around pro player lifestyle, path to pro, people who ask the question, can I go pro, do I want to go pro, and then we'll talk about pro player histories, and then we'll also talk about pro view in general, because this is the new thing that everyone has access to, so... Yep, pretty much there. Where, where, where do you want to start? I think the script says we should start at my career, how I went back to pro. Sure. So I'll explain it very fast, I guess. So um, so it just comes naturally, I guess, right? You're young, you're a kid, you start mm -hmm. gaming. Mm -hmm. You play many different games. Sometimes it's your brothers or your sisters or your mm -hmm. family that get you into games or your uncle or someone who knows. Mm -hmm. And then you just play. And for me, how it was, was both my brothers were gamers. Uh, ga like, no one in my family did gaming part. Yeah. So, I mean, no one of my parents did gaming part. Sorry, I, I have to correct myself. But both my bo brothers did, especially yeah. my older one. And then basically, I started off just watching him play mm -hmm. and basically just absorbing information. And then eventually, he gave me and my brother his computer. Mm -hmm. and so me and my brother finally could start playing games. Now, the trick was that me and my brother had to share the same PC. So the rule that we had was, I play one game, he plays one game. I play one game, he plays one game. Okay. So we were both very energetic to play. And what also happened is that we were both very impatient. So when I was in game, he would like bully me in a way if I performed badly. Mm -hmm. And then I would bully him if he performed badly. So that also like made us sometimes hate, hate each other a lot, but also like improve uh, each other really fast. And then um, basically TLDR is, uh, we were playing browser games online. Mm -hmm. My brother met someone in Slovenia that introduced League of Legends to him. He didn't actually, he downloaded it, but he didn't play it. So I was the first one who started playing it. Okay. And then I played it for like about a month or a few weeks at least until he like finally, okay, I'm gonna give it a try and then he got hooked up on it so at first i was better because i started playing first yeah and sometimes uh, i went to play instead of him mm -hmm. and just carried the game because he was like i don't know how to win can you do it for me and stuff mm -hmm. um and then at some point he catched up he was older smarter he catched up he okay. went far above me so he he was like we were playing in na back then because eu servers didn't exist and we played from, this? yeah, th that was before season one, we started playing. So um, we had 250 pink. So we played with 250 pink, which back then it wasn't as impactful as it is nowadays, right? So he got like insanely high ELO. Really? Um, in 250? Yeah, yeah. Insanely high ELO. Okay. Uh, he was an AD carry main. And, um, okay. Yeah. And um, uh, back then I was a needly one trick mainly. So there were games where... Um, there were games where he got like out of field top lane mm -hmm. and he, j he was just like, okay, you play instead of me. I was gold back then. Mm -hmm. So I went as a gold player against like back then, watch what would be considered challenger. And I played against like, I remember Wicked. I played against Wicked. And okay. I went like 8 0. Like I, I smurfed <laughs> every game. But I could only play Nidalee. I could only play Nidalee. Okay. And I played on his account, right? So no one like even knew it was me. They just mm -hmm. thought it was him. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So he stayed high ELO. He was very dominant in the Slovenian scene because uh, he was like, like he, he got known pretty fast, kind of. And then I I started like, okay, I need to like, I need to get better. So in, in one season, I went from gold to diamond instantly. Just one chicken rumble. Mm -hmm. Back then, meta was like Jarvan Toplin. So How many free roams? 
Yeah, free, obviously. <laughs> no but, doubt, no doubt. But yeah. the, the back then, the interesting part was Jarvan used to be the biggest counter to Rumble. But when mm -hmm. I played the matchup, Rumble always won. Mm -hmm. So like it was like kind of sick when the players wrote to me in the game, how do you manage to win this matchup? And I'm just like, I just know how to play. Mm -hmm. And basically, TLDR is, yeah, I kept going just like that. And eventually got Master, got Challenger. Um, but I did also have a lot of regrets. Like, um, I was also lazy and complacent at a lot of times. And I thought like, I thought to myself like, Ah, it's fine. I can play like L LCS anyway. I'm too young. Yeah. Might as well just be casual for now. And when the time comes, I'm I'm really gonna put the gas on the paddle. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I look at it back, I should have like tried more back mm -hmm. then. Uh, that was like the biggest regret maybe, because like I also played other games, uh, which I think was like a mistake, and I didn't like try hard as much as I should have. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much my story. I mean. I mean, the story then goes, right? I was in high school. I mean, I was sick and tired of it, so I quit. I should have quit before. I knew yeah. I should have quit before, but I had a hard time quitting. Wait, did you, my did you finish? No. Okay. I quit the third year. I needed why why is everyone in the church a dropout? What is... I mean, <laughs> what's, what's... I, I want <laughs> to quit earlier. That's the funny okay. part. And then um, I basically just... Okay, I'm going to give it my all for one year at least. Uh -huh. So in like one month of time... Um, like someone that I knew from solo queue and stuff, uh, recommended to Mad Lions, right? And then I had tryouts with them, mm -hmm. and uh, then I flew to Spain a couple of weeks later, and then the whole experience began, which we can get into later, I guess. Yeah, we'll 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 touch into that later. I mean, I guess for me, I mean, I I feel like I I've said my story so many times on interviews and stuff. Although one of the last times I said it, there was a lot of people in the comments and as well as like on Twitter and stuff that were like. You can't have memories that young mm. because I started at like two, two and a half playing games. Um, and it, a lot of people are pretty adamant that children can't remember it, at that time period. But um, you can. So, uh, yeah, my, my, my both my uncles were competitive Mortal Kombat players and they had black and white notebooks like the, the compact or whatever, whatever it is. And inside of it there would be combo sequences that would be, you know, for certain matchups and it, this matchup or whatever you do this combo and it would just have percentages and other stuff written down. And one of my other uncles, David was really into time attack mode, which is nowadays called speed running um, or just doing time. Yeah. Like time attack. Right. And when I would watch him do it or when I would talk with him about like various things, he would explain like why you have to optimize things in a certain way. And David was really important, I think, to everything surrounding me because David taught me reading uh, before kindergarten. David taught me math before children are supposed to learn it, right? Um, I remember knowing, like, uh, multiplication and division, I think, even, even by kindergarten. Um, and David thought it was fun, like, accelerating uh, things that I would know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this also played a part into me feeling sort of alienated from other kids, uh, to a certain extent um, and also feeling very bored in school pretty early on um, but I would just always play games Mortal Kombat Killer Instinct um, would play other games too like Zelda Final Fantasy and stuff RPGs and that was pretty much that and then I got into competitive gaming um, with Yu-Gi-Oh initially if you count that and then Starcraft when I was 11 12 um, and there was the whole cheating incident with me as well and then later down the line, I get into StarCraft II. Uh, I play Magic at one point, um, and then Hearthstone, and just laundry list of things. And then I end up in Korea, and here I've been for 10 years. So um, every, every time I tell it, I mean, it, I, I've said it so many different times. So that's pretty much that. I mean, we'll go into some of the, 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 uh, the darker stories. I, I went into one recently on LCS where I, I went through the gravity mm -hmm. store. Well... I touched on the surface of the gravity story. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about it in this, but that was pretty much my my walk. I, I feel like everyone who ends up in the pro-life scene, they start really, really young in some facet where they're doing competitive gaming or they get, they, they're made aware of it really early on and they, they commit a lot of time to it. Um, I don't think that anyone finds out about it late into like their teens or something and then decides that they're going to start doing something. Usually I don't think that's ever the case. Yeah. 
think one important thing for me, I mean, I experience it a lot in Twitch chat, right? People go and ask me, now, Mrs. I'm platinum now. Can I become a pro? <coughs> no. <laughs> and I'm well, just thinking to myself, when I was like platinum, I didn't even think about it, you know? Yeah. Like, when, 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 I, when I realized I can go pro well, is when I, when I knew I was good enough myself. So the so I have the thing I call the two year theory, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, with the, so the two year theory is that I believe that people will operate at a speed within two years that shows what they can tango with, and what I mean by that is when you, if you join League of Legends right now in season eleven, you don't need to know about season four, five, six. Season three, season two, season one, right? You don't need to know anything about that. You don't even need to actually know a whole lot about the game. You only need to know a very few specific things, and then you can just sort of coast by doing your own thing. You can yeah. get Challenger. You can get high MMR doing that. You don't need to actually have a lot of knowledge. This is a common misbelief that a lot of people have in order to get high MMR. So the two-year theory that I have is that if you're identifying patterns in the game refining them, honing them, and then, you know, reapplying your, your you know, new knowledge, etc. at a speed that's quick enough, you're probably going to hit that threshold of, like, master, grandmaster, right, equivalency MMR within the first two years of playing the game. Yeah. Even if you've never touched it before. Um, and the only pro player who I've ever either interviewed or talked to that have said, and this is across 16 years of being in esports, um, that they haven't hit like that threshold within that time cycle is actually fudge, which is really weird because he said he s took six years to hit diamond. Yeah. Um, so that, th now, one offs out of like so many people, it doesn't really necessarily refute it. And I'm not saying that what I'm saying is a law either. I'm just saying, in my experience, yeah. I've never seen this, right? I mean, you look at the T1 Academy players that we were scrimming against a few weeks ago. And you find out how quickly they they raised a, or climbed the ranks. It was really fast. The fourteen year old. I think nowadays people do it fast. They do it really fast in, because in, there's so much information yeah, available. Yeah, in the past, right. I could understand why someone was like slower. Yeah. It was more acceptable, but I think nowadays there's so much like information, and so much like you have no excuse. Knowledge. Right, right, right. You have no excuse to be bad. Yeah. I mean, coaching wasn't. Well, people will say coaching was a thing, but really one of the reasons that I got as big as I did is because there wasn't anyone doing coaching or EDU content, yeah. at least not, not to yeah. the same extent that I was. Um, and so I, I was very lucky in that regard. I, I, I think that if modern day me started up again, if I didn't have the same work ethic that I had back then or that I, you know, I, I generally tend to carry with myself, I wouldn't become the same person now. I mean, you would also have to probably find other unique ways to to, like, to stand out. Yeah. To stand out. Yeah, and it, it gets harder every year. Yeah, yeah, it gets harder every year. Yeah. Like I remember, like some of your old videos are so, they're so unique for their time. Yeah. And um, they still apply nowadays, which is so funny. Like you can go oh, watch. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember I was watching like uh, the StarCraft video, something about the StarCraft video. I don't know. And I, I was just watching for like 10 minutes. I was just like, okay, I mean, this still applies nowadays. Like all of it. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Time flies. Yeah, a lot of a lot of my... So one of the things that actually disappoints me about modern day esports, right, is a lot of my old LOL videos, when I first came into the scene, they're either still not happening yet or they're yeah. just starting to happen. But people are not going to watch them now because they're too old. Well, they're idiots. Is what it, I mean that I mean that's that, that's the that's the reality of it. I mean, so one of the one of the things I, I had that really long talk on stream a couple of weeks ago. Tiv didn't want to upload it, um, or like edit it and upload it, right? Yeah. But it was About the a Kogmo, right? well, it well it followed the Cogmo talk, yeah, right? Yeah. But it was a it was like a three hour deep dive into why I arrived at thinking how I do, how I break things down, how I view things across my multitude of games, all playing at a really high level or participating in at a very, very high level. Um, and I remember someone asking, like, why would you upload that? No one's going to watch it or something. And I remember thinking to myself, it's not for the average person. It's for the next me. Mm -hmm. um, or because the next me would want that video to exist the way that I needed and wanted uh, Yosh, who was the StarCraft coach that I had way back in the day. Um, and who is like, 
I, I would say he makes up the majority of the same exact fundamental principles that I use to view things in modern day times. Um, and that was a very, very important and necessary baseline for me to have going forward. So mm. it's rough, rough yep. times. But Pat the Pro, I mean, we can we can talk about a lot of this. I mean, you just said it, right? Platinum players will ask you, uh, can I go pro, right? There's yeah. the two-year theory thing um, that I have myself. And we could deep dive into it. And I feel like there's going to be people that are like, they're really mad at it, right? Like, no, I can be pro or I can do this or I can do that. The, the whole thing is you don't need that much time to start moving similar to your peers. You mm -hmm. just don't need it. You either can or you can't. This is this is something that's been on my mind a lot lately, and I do have to like do this rant right now. But I know there are a lot of people all over the world that are like, <laughs> "Oh God, you yeah. can do anything as yeah. long as you have the right mind to it. You can do you. Everyone can hit challenger. Everyone can do no. Parents you, lied. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. Like uh, what? Ninety nine percent of players will never be pros in league. More than that. I mean, more than that. Way more than that, We're yeah. just doing 99 yeah. because it's like a round number. Well, one of the one of the interesting things that I I was thinking about this the other day. I can't remember who I was having a conversation with. I don't know. Maybe it was Fudge. But um, maybe it wasn't Fudge. I don't know. A lot of players are also able to be pros due to where they were born. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's Everything if plays into factor. Ever, everything plays into... Yeah, right. right, right, right. Th th there so could be players that are good enough to be pro, but they actually can't be because of the country they're in or stuff like that. No? Right, like Korean, Korean pros. Yeah, for yeah. example. Or there's other scenarios. Right. I, think. I mean, there's definitely China yeah. is another one. China's, China's really scary how many challengers and stuff they have that yeah. will never see the light of day. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's definitely scary. I think Europe is probably just in general the most accessible. Yeah. In in order to become pro, and then someone, uh, I mean, th there's there's different degrees of difficulty into being able to become pro in various regions. Like are obviously hardships that you have to overcome. Yeah. NA um, is getting scarier because of the import stuff. Yeah. And but I also think it's the easiest time ever to enter an NA. That, yeah, I, I, which I is kind of weird. I would agree with that. Yeah, it's really weird because you don't actually have to be a good import. You just have to be popular. Yeah, that's a really sad reality right I now. I think I think it's also easier to become a pro there if you're really good in like solo queue or like if you're like really talented. Uh, it well, it should be. It but should we'll, be. We'll, we'll talk about some of the the inner workings, or the the dark should. the yeah. dark depths of. Uh, I mean, we touched on it in episode one and two, right? Um, that players aren't incentivized to ever actually speak negative about inadequate yeah. foundations that they find themselves in. Um, but then th th the same light, nepotism and everything runs rampant. So mm -hmm. it gets pretty hard. You have to really be standoutish. One of the one of the biggest advices I always give to kids now, and I say kids because if someone says, like, I'm challenger NA, I'm 16 or something, what should I do? I tell them um, basically like befriend everyone but make relationships with no one yeah you want no one to think ill of you but at the same time you don't want to be anyone's friend because they're not your friend yeah a anyone there's can so like many dynamics backstab going on. you yeah yeah you exactly yeah and i don't know you should just also you know it, it it can be a meme and stuff but you should really like not just just don't type because it will never do any good there right. will be never no positive where you uh, that you will get out if you're gonna like typing him mm -hmm. um and then just being consistent i think it's like a marathon in a way yeah it gets very tiring for sure to play solo queue all day and like let's say you can consistently hit rank one or be in top 10 all the time it, it will get tiring but if you just keep doing it i mean someone will notice you mm -hmm. if you're good and but there are all other factors, I think, like which role are you playing, right? Some roles will just have a harder time entering pro and some will have easier <coughs> support. Um, then there's <laughs> like... Support is the easiest thing to enter right now in NA. Uh, that is by far and away the easiest... Th suppo support is so weird. Oh, sorry, let me just throw six million in imports. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I watched his pro view the other day. Yeah, I don't want to know it's about a, it. It's the eighth wonder of the world, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. I'll, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. 
that was that was that was something else. But we'll uh, we'll probably touch on that a little bit later. But yeah, support supports in a, a really really weird spot in general. I think that for the the other scary thing about this though is that if you're really good enough, you don't just accept any offer though. That's actually stupid. Oh yeah, that's 100%. that's another problem. You have to be have really to careful out. that what yeah, you're accepting. Yeah, you gotta. Way. Yeah, and if you have no connections in the scene, yep. Uh, let's say you have no information, you're just going in blind. It's just a coin flip. You you're might screwed. join a team that would just ruin your career, pretty much. Or ruin your life. Or ruin your life. Because mental effects or whatever. Or anything that you might have to do. Yeah, w- it's, w- right. It's scary. If you give up. You know what's also scary? Being like a 16-year-old kid or 17 yeah. and having no clue what you're reading on your contract. Yep. <laughs> and then, you know, in the contract, there's a random thing written like, yeah, we're supposed to pay you this and this, but this can go into like housing. And then it's right. like, okay, they can just pay you nothing then, you know, for example. There, there's a lot of... There's I had a contract like this given to me one day. Okay. Well, li- I mean, we, we can... I mean, I, uh, gravity was... Uh, so there was obviously... There was SHC, right? Which was my yeah. first... It was yeah. my first entry. And SHC was definitely interesting uh, obviously people know that I temporarily left SHC and then I rejoined like a month later. And in between that is like the whole G2 scandal mm-hmm. thing that happened with me where Ocelot didn't pay me. And then Sky Williams paid me for Ocelot. Yeah. Um, so there was, there was that whole thing that happened. And the whole reason surrounding that is because I went from literal poverty. I was, I was making, I, I, I was making super piss low amount of money. I was playing Heroes of the Storm, uh, in the alpha because I had tried to join a Korean team and I lost the top lane tryout possibility to Khan. Mm-hmm. Now on Dom one. Um, and so I had quit league and then, uh, the Nidalee coaching session, the Jace coaching sessions that blew up on Reddit. And then I joined SHC cause the pro players, uh, really liked the videos. And so that was fine. I temporarily leave them. And then after that there's MYM and then riot mandates the rule mm-hmm. for coaches uh, I called it November, the November coaches, right? Um, because Riot made it in November. And then the Janalists, because January rule for the stipend. Um, and during that time, there was obviously the horror story stuff that happened with Selfie. But there's two recordings. Yeah. One of them was public. The what? second one was not public. Mm-hmm. Second one, I believe Riot, well, Riot must have had access to it. But the, the second one was way more disturbing um, because it was a legitimate promise of uh, bodily severe or severe bo- bodily harm uh, or, or something. Um, it was really fucked up. Uh, that one never came out. And I remember that I, if I didn't have that converse, well, I wonder what would even happen if I didn't have the conversation with Selfie before he had gone in to meet with these people because I could tell really early on from the conversation with them, these people aren't right. Cause not a lot of people maybe wholly know like my backstory um, uh, or like what kind of a path I traveled even coming into Korea, but I'm always really suspicious and skeptical of people. Um, and I think it's really important to try to identify their patterns like really fast and try to like size them up, so to speak. Right. To, to at least a, a certain extent. So you know who you're dealing with. Um, and these people just radiated poison. Um, and so when he, when he went to have that conversation, there, there was obviously the recording, the one that came out public, which was, you know, uh, where he said something about the moving your, you know, taking the mom's house or something or like, yeah. you know, so it became move your mother or something or like whatever. That's what MYM became. Mm-hmm. But that was a really dark and corrupt thing. And then there was my time on gravity, um, and gravity there's a lot of horror stories from Gravity that never necessarily came out into the public. And I mean, everyone's going to have their own stories, right? I mean, oh, it's, it's been six years now, so um, a lot of time has passed. But there was like that one incident where Saint went on stream and like lied um, about me. And fortunately, I still had the hard drive, right? Um, and I think, I mean, I've said this multiple times. I think he just didn't expect me to still have the hard drive with all the VODs like still logged right um that that obviously show that what he was saying was not true um but that was a really scary point in my career because that could have just maybe potentially ended me at that point in time i wasn't ls that i am now um and who fucking knows 
um, because I was being labeled as like some disease ridden, like me mentally disease ridden, you know, fucking weirdo that just like doesn't show up to scrims and like all this other. It was yeah. total bullshit. Um, but obviously the, the, the motive came out later, um, which was me and one of his friends were vying for the Tempo Storm coaching spot. Mm. So uh, is it premeditated? I think so in that moment. Um, this is many, many years ago. But anyways, other gravity horror stories. Um, I already told on stream uh, several times. I, t I told the cockroach story that was uh, pretty fucking bad. I told the, uh, you know, sleeping in the garage with no ventilation or like it's way too hot. Um, the, the, the whole reason that I ended up in the garage, uh, you know, um, but then also just the, the, the stench of the alcohol and the drugs in the house could not fucking deal with it. Just mm -hmm. couldn't. Now, nowadays, I think with all the big sponsors and the franchises, fortunately, I think a lot of these types of issues are gone. Yeah. Um, but gravity took a really, really big toll on me mentally. And I'm sure other players would have different fucking stories because, you know, certain ones were like golden childs uh, to the org. Yeah. Um, and there was definitely a hierarchy that existed within that house. Um, but it was it was really, really, really gross. Um, and obviously it went belly up a few months after I left. Um, I had all my medication stolen. So I, I'm prescribed Adderall. Right. Which is a very, very popular drug. And one night, uh, Gravity had like, you know, a, a house party. Yeah. And I had all my, I, I had all my pills behind my monitor on my desk and moved it to behind my monitor. Wake up and uh, all the pills are gone. Now, whatever fucking buffoon stole it, left the bottles. Yeah. Right. And then when I, when I go to the owner to say that all my pills got stolen, he accuses me of lying and that I just emptied them. Mm. And then said that they got, dude, it was... Oh man, um, I told other stories on my stream about the horror stories from there, but uh, like the me being barricaded into one of the rooms and then being demanded to sign an NDA didn't end up happening. But intimidation tactics and stuff like this this runs rampant in early esports stages. Um, and now obviously you can't do things like this; it's a lot more structured. No, it's like. The, the problems I feel like got ba like th these old problems they they kind of got fixed but also n a lot of new ones came in so it's well it's like they're a lot more intelligent yeah nowadays when yeah. they try to take advantage of you yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah. and a lot of different tactics are utilized yeah I, I experienced lying a lot um yeah it's like <laughs> you ask you ask someone you hear one side you ask the other guy he's uh, does mm -hmm. another side and then mm -hmm. it's up to you to figure out what the hell is going on here and yeah. sometimes both of them are lying and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah okay need to find the truth the tactic i guess well this is why i'm always a really big fan of actions right actions speak louder than words yeah always doesn't matter what someone's saying i think monitoring their actions over a long period of time are way more honest of anything than they can ever hope to say mm -hmm. so there's that but I mean, we can go into other stories. I mean, you can you can talk about Mad Lions and Fnatic Path to Pro because I think that people's ideas of going pro, one of the things that I always say is if you're an amateur and you're trying to go pro, do not join a team. Just get really good multi-account high challenger and wait, and you need to just hold out. Oh, yeah. If you're, if you're really worth your shit and you know that you're really worth your shit and you're actually very, very good, you just need to hold. Yeah, okay. So a lot of people actually don't know this, but um I'm trying to remember. It was it was a bit before I joined Mad Lions. I actually yeah. had an offer to join a L LCS back then, an LCS team as a substitute mid laner, like an in-house one. Mm -hmm. Cuz back then like in-house subs got a bit popular. Yeah, and I remember that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say which team it was. I, okay. I don't want to, but um, I didn't take it in the end because it, it felt very scary to me to mm -hmm. take it. Like I had no idea what would happen, and I did kind like I did know I would be better than their their player because their then their player got eventually like replaced, and now he's not even playing anymore. Okay. Um, but it, it was still way too scary. I was just like, I I can't do this. I mean, I had no life experience whatsoever. I barely moved out of my house. You know. Yeah. Um. But but also when before I joined Mad Lions, I was really thinking like, uh, uh, so my first thought back then was like I'm gonna j I should join L LCS without even joining an academy team. 
Yeah. Like I should just go straight up or not go at all. Yeah. But Mad Lions, um, it was, it was like a one-time kind of offer. Like if, I think if I would uh, get an offer from like any other Spanish team back mm-hmm. then, like I just knew like the roster is just not good enough. Like yeah. there's no way I would carry this to the first place. So, um. I wouldn't take the other offers. I also wouldn't take like other leagues. Like I had back then, I remember I had I had an offer for a German league, and they offered me like <laughs> they offered me like eight hundred euros, I think, or six hundred, something Man. like this. Okay, my so first salary is, was a hundred. So, no, but that was the offer. So, but but no, okay. So I was like, f- back then, I mean, this was like s- a standard offer, but like, like to me, like they would get an upgrade like 10 times their players like all of them to get t- together combined mm-hmm. so i was just like okay so i go talk to their manager i was like okay is is the food being paid like i was just asking basic information like maybe the org provides the food or that and the ma- and the guy said to me yes the food is being paid and then he like and then he says like from those 800 euros 200 for that is for food <laughs> and i was just like oh <laughs> so you're not paying my food you're just making up you're paying my food after that blacklist Never, never, no, 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 I refuse. No, 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 um, So, not. interestingly enough, I believe that happened with me on Gravity. So, coaching stipend, um, you know, Riot made, like, the stipend, right? But I, th- I'm, uh, I might be wrong. I know that, I know, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that food, yeah. And But this yeah. happens with other teams. Even yeah. modern day, it actually does happen. Yeah. A lot of people don't know about this. Some uh, some teams do remove or they deduct payments before they pay out to the player mm-hmm. um, for housing mm-hmm. and all this other stuff because they can legally do it. On BBQ, I remember this was also a thing, uh, the, the Korean team that I was on. Mm-hmm. Um, and... It, I mean, it, it gets really, really, really weird. You what, now, when I joined Challengers Korea, it was like going back in time. Chal- so Korea, until literally maybe last year, was in the dark ages. It was actually like going back in time four or five years maybe in Western esports. Korea, Korea has, I think a lot of people think this, uh, that a lot of people think Korea has the best infrastructure. They don't. The team houses... Staff members that they have, everything else, no, it's nothing. Only, only the top <laughs> it's tiers. nothing compared to NA and EU. Yeah, honestly, it is. It's like those commercials where you see like Hollywood, and then you see like the poverty, like sh- like it's bad. The discrepancy between what Korean teams actually have versus Western teams, and then the level of performance. Would you say NA has like the best one? I think they do. Right? Oh, uh, China. Have you seen China? Oh no, I haven't. China's okay, like China makes sense, but I was China's yeah, I was thinking of the, the other another thing. world. Yeah, yeah, China, yeah, China's well. It's hard for me to even fathom China. It's a place I want to visit. I mean, it's really I can't hard. Imagine it, yeah, it's yeah. it's 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 uh, it does sound otherworldly, especially when you see some of the videos. Um, but NA is I've seen some. Yeah, they're they're it's really crazy. really nice. Yeah, it's I mean, crazy. now we're we're I mean we're in T one right now. T one is the best. Uh. It's the best. I'm. It is like it's okay to. I it's, can't agree with that. <laughs> not, not, I can't not, agree with that. Not on stream, you can't. But we know the truth. So, um, you know, if you look out the window and look down, you know, a couple of meters, maybe you see Gen G. But, um, you know, I mean, so I'm we just, have we have T1 and Gen G, and T1 has a magnificent building. But T1 and Gen G were, I think, the first two that actually had something like this. Freak has a sick one. I don't know if you saw the saw the video. Afrika has a really, really, oh, really sick one. I haven't. It's brand new, mm-hmm. but T1 uh, is like sort of like leading a lot of the innovation that happens in Korea when it comes to modernizing yeah. esports in Korea, like it is in the West. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, like talking about this w- again, when I went when I went into Challengers Korea, it was like it was going back in time. Yeah. It was rough. And I remember, so I was getting, you know, I, I was getting way less than I would get from any Western offer, right? And I did it because I wanted to do something with the Korean team. It was always like a dream, right? And I had to buy computers and monitors yeah. for the players yeah. to use. So, and there was a lot of other, there was a lot, there was a lot of other stuff that went on. Um 
And that was after that, I, I thought to myself, okay, I'm never returning to coaching. Mm-hmm. That That's what I thought mm-hmm. because it just didn't make sense. Yeah. But seeing what a lot of Korean players go through and the path to go pro while we're talking about like this stuff with like ladder and rank and stuff, yeah. they have this other crisis, which is, Am I am I eighteen? Oh my god, I'm ancient. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, it's so insane. Mm. You get called old here if you're nineteen. Yeah, it's crazy. But also, I think the the living conditions. Uh, I think I think maybe maybe this is just me, but Koreans are like they're more. They want like you know neat like a lot of stuff like yeah. they, they sleep on the floor if they want if if they well, have it's normal. to or, or like yeah, yeah that's considered normal but like you know in Europe and NA maybe like you have a bed. Yeah, you have a you have a mansion. Yeah, sometimes. you sometimes. It just depends what team you join, right? I was really um I was really like I really like I was really careful that like what cuz I I got like a lot of offers from like these bottom tier teams. I was really careful like to actually want to join there. Oh, yeah, I know wh- how things kind of are there. Yeah, this guy tells me that, this guy tells me this. I just had to w- work with like little information from like some pieces, but that information information can't like necessarily be correct, right? Yeah. So it's hard to make the correct choice. I mean, sometimes. I mean, it's always really scary. Sometimes, like the you have to make a choice, even though you know it's like you're taking a bullet. Well, the the thing is, uh, so most people's okay. So managers, general managers, managers, and owners' interests are not aligned with players. Yeah. And players' interests are not aligned with owners, general managers, and you know whatnot. Yeah. The other thing is that most people in North America, especially, or in esports in general, usually they're not concerned with growth. They're concerned with self-preservation because the industry is so finicky. So when that's a reality, things start to get really, really, really scary, especially when you're dealing with a lot of people that will say anything to you. Um, th- so there's a, uh, there's a certain you know, prominent person who y- you remember, I got the screenshot. Fortunately, I got it because my phone gave me the notif, right. That he had replied, mm-hmm. um, where he goes on record to just outright lie about off season, uh, moves or roster changes. Right. Mm-hmm. But I got the screenshot really quick. Um, because I-, I don't know, apparently you don't think longer than 10 seconds before you hit send on your tweet. Yeah. Um, but I have that screenshot where he lies about you. Yeah. Um, that one's insane. You're just like lying. Like it, it's just, it's, it's so crazy to me um, that like they, they wouldn't think for longer than 10 seconds before realizing, wait a minute, actually he lives with them. They're just going to put two and two together. Mm-hmm. Right. Like th- that's not true. Now, obviously eventually they reach that realization um, and they delete the tweet, but it's crazy. Right. Um, the amount of playing both sides of the fence that goes on in off seasons is also gross, mm-hmm. not just with general managers, but also with agents. Yeah. Right. Oof, oof, oof. Because agents want to make a buck on players. A lot of people don't know this, but sometimes it's not the actual... not for the player on the player. Yeah. Which is totally different. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this, but um, sometimes it's not the orc building the roster it's the agent actually like <laughs> people people have no idea like if you if you were to ask right now the the general scene mm. they don't they probably are not even aware that agents are who they are or which player are i only know of uh i only know of two but there's a lot uh, more there's a lot there are so I, I many know, i know a lot of them. i know of them uh via not word of mouth i'm trying to say like i'll talk to someone and they'll say i have to talk to my agent yeah and i'm like who and they won't say and i'm like it's kind of weird right the other two agents that i know i mean they're very they're very known they're in the public and whatnot but there's other scary ones like the the, the, there's there's scary ones that have been around for a really long time and you never hear about them but then you find out that they're they're still doing contracts and like other stuff behind the scenes but then you you find out about some horror stories that go on and it's just really weird yeah, th- I've been I've been contacted by a lot of these very small unknown ones, and then they're like, "Let's give a call." Right? I'm like, yeah. "Okay." I mean, I kind of don't want to, mm-hmm. but then 
I, I ask other people, they're like, okay, just give it a try. Okay, I give it a try. I'm five minutes into the call. I'm like, holy sh... I get me out. <laughs> Please, get me out. Yeah. Um. So interestingly enough, so obviously people might think like, I'm not referring to agents uh, outside of this scope, right? Yeah. Some people might think like, LS, you have an agent or something. I'm like, yes, for sponsors. It's like not for, yeah. not for team haggling. And why is this agent... Like, this agent has probably more sources than Jacob Wolf. Like, you know what I mean? Because the players are all just going oh, to Oh, they him. know everything. They know everything. Oh, they know everything. They know absolutely everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they just talk. That's probably how... In private, they just that's talk. That's probably how a lot of things got actually leaked. And before, Wulu's Jacob Wolf. <laughs> like, yeah, like that's yeah. They know everything. Do you know who Wulu is? No, I don't. I don't know either. Even if I would, I would probably say, no, I don't. No. <laughs> He has one of Maybe the best. I'm the agent. He he has he has one of the best brands though. He genuinely I mean, does. Yeah. Wulu, you just go on Twitter and there's that fucking Wulu looking at you. I guess so. <laughs> Wulu, Wulu, Wulu is hilarious. So um, well the Wulu stuff is also scary because you can see what happens. Yeah, he just goes, he makes a random tweet, and then the whole <laughs> public believes. But it. Wulu's like the puppet master. That's yeah. how crazy it is. It's crazy. But also, other players have come out recently. And there was that one thing that apparently caused a lot of traction where a uh, pro player mentioned that Reddit controls a lot of off-season signings or yeah. signings in general. Yeah. And it's just crazy. Yeah. It's so stupid. I remember years ago, right? I had defended, uh, you know, Parth on TSM? Yeah. I had made a comment that Parth shouldn't be, uh, you know, nothing should happen to Parth or something because of Reddit. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And then Parth did this like weird thing where he scoffed at the notion that Reddit would ever control roster decisions. And I'm just like, okay, well, okay. maybe this should, uh, man, <laughs> no, well, no, not that. It was just, it was just so weird because it's like, it's like watching someone that knows the reality mm -hmm. and then just choosing to lie. It was just very, it was, that was an eerie, uh, kind of situation because it does. Right. Um, a lot of the, the owners, the higher ups and stuff, they don't play the game. They don't know the game. There's no discernibility, right? So Reddit, Twitter, um, YouTube, mm -hmm. right, controls a lot of power. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's scary. So for new players, Path to Pro, it's uh, modern day. It's very scary. I think the best thing to do it's so is different. literally have no brand. You need. I, I think you need... Pretty much maybe, no brand. Maybe like a hidden brand. Maybe like a brand where you don't talk much. You could you could have a brand like that. Like but the, I think like those type of brands, I, I personally like them the most. That would be my ideal brand. But well, I think they're not possible if you want like to well, be here's the big, thing. you know? The, here, here's one of the things that's also scary about those kind of brands, right? Is because if you get in bed, even on one instance, with someone who has r some relative form of power, right? Yeah. And then you make it known that you don't actually like them yeah. or respect them. Yeah. Like you as the player don't re respect that person. They will go on a narrative spree trying mm -hmm. to make sure no one gets you. Yeah. Oh, I'm hiccuping. You know who I'm referring to in Europe. Yeah. You know exactly who I'm referring to. Um, yeah. That's disgusting. Um, that w once once um, they find out that this player doesn't like them, they just then go anti on this player. Mm -hmm. It's fucking so insane man um which i i know that you you've listed this about me right what like it, it's pretty known there are certain players that i like despise their essence uh as a human um yeah, yeah me too but i've said they belong in lcs <laughs> or they they belong like um you know like yeah their skill level is good their, their skill level is more than good enough um i would you know if i ever had to meet them i would only operate on you know and be cordial but please get me out. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to associate with yeah, this person, yeah, right? I, but if you're asking my honest opinion, are they good enough to play or are they worthy enough to play? Of course. Mm -hmm. And if you do anything but that, I mean, it's... it's, it's now, you're, now you're getting into really fucking snake behavior. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also harming your own credibility. So Modern Day Pro, again, the advice that I always have is befriend everyone so that they know who you are. Right to an extent, like what's his name, Zoo Kill, right? Yeah. A lot of people know who he is. He streams. I think that's a bad mistake. Um, a lot of people know who he is. No one really has like a deep relationship with him, mm -hmm. and that's the way that it should be. Yeah, it should be super surface level, right? 
Um, that way, he keeps all his avenues open. No one's mad at him if he goes in a different direction. No one's mad if he chooses someone else over them or something. Totally fine. Surface level, right? That's, I think, the best thing to do. But the second that you try to start befriending people, you also inadvertently create enemies. Mm-hmm. Because not if, everyone in this industry is I think friend. if you befriend wrong people, yeah. Especially. Well, I mean, if 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 someone suddenly becomes like friendly with me or something, they're instantly on like at least fifty people shit lists. Oh, true, yeah, true. <laughs> you know, definitely. like the the fucking it's scary. the heretics, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. the atheists. We call them. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know. Actually, it's <laughs> kind of funny. It's, it's That's kinda actually how it is, dude. The fucking support group on Twitter. Anytime they like subtweet, because they won't they won't tweet me by name, mm-hmm. right? Um, but they'll subtweet. And every time I just picture people in like robed fucking hoodies, like sending out bat signals to each other, like you fucking losers. It's kind of funny, right? Because a lot, a lot of people in the scene they try to make things like hidden, and th- you know they're like, oh yeah, that guy, this guy, yeah, he does that, this and that. But the information always spreads. Like literally, I had an example this week, like not not even joking. This week of like me hearing what some people in NA are talking about you. Like, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This week. What happened? Well, we're not saying it on stream. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, I had, I, I've gotten like a lot of information. But like, it's kind of okay. funny, right? Because it just happens. Like one guy talks to one guy and then like, yeah, but uh, we're friends. We're cool. It's never going to get out. And then two days later, I know it somehow, you know, and it's like. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Love um, it. Then uh, I guess what can we talk about? Um, maybe like house conditions. Housing conditions. I well, I mean, I think they vary. Well, I don't know how they are in. Uh, I don't know how they are modern day. I know how they used to be. I already talked about. Yeah, that. Yeah, used to be pretty bad. Used a, to be really, really things. bad. Nowadays yeah. better, but can still be. I mean, I don't know, so I can't really. I mean, in Korea. Um, a lot of teams have now shifted to facilities like this one. Yeah. Um, I don't know how the houses themselves are, but I don't think it in Korea it's always sort of been the same. You go on YouTube, search Korean house tours. I mean, I feel like it's improving. Like for example, it's in always the, improving. In the yeah. past, um, most of the teams didn't even have like, have their like own ch- chefs or like you had to order food, and yep. that would be a lot of money. Like you have to understand. Ordering food, usually when you order food, the food delivery is like minimum 10 or something. Yeah. And then you have a fee when the guy delivers you. The food's not fresh. It's usually unhealthy as hell. Mm-hmm. I mean, you spent, let's say you do two meals per day. I mean, that's a lot of money per mm-hmm. month. It's crazy. Um, but nowadays, I think most teams by now have like actually like food preparation. Yeah. Now people are also implementing like gym, you know, yoga, meditation, yep. whatever. Yep. Um other there's, a, there's stuff. a lot of stuff i mean the, some of the facilities that are in an a are fantastic but also there's this weird thing where i think that like maybe someone like you or me me especially would appreciate it a lot more than maybe someone who's never known anything else and they just join it for the first time mm-hmm. um like for me it, it's it's crazy i remember tempo storm tempo storm was probably my first instance of a well-run team internally yeah. With, like, the manager and support staff was, like, really prompt. Really, 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 really prompt. And it was pretty insane. I I, I, I remember thinking, so Tempo Storm had meals delivered by a, a chef uh-huh. um, every day. Mm-hmm. They would come. And then they would go into the fridge, and we had a manager and all this other stuff. And it's sad. I've, Tempo Storm disbandance because of franchising, right? Um, but, like, Raynad was the most hands-on owner slash he was a pro in Hearthstone, right? Yeah. So he, I think he understood, and he was also young. I think he was 27 during Tempo Storm. Um, it was pretty insane. That was my first instance of a good run-in with a house. Yeah, that was nice. Um, j- just so I just... I saw a thing in, in Twitch chat. A lot of people were asking, why not cook? And I'm like, guys, cooking... Uh, yes technically a player could cook not only does it waste you so much time every day you have to go to shop you have to actually prepare the food then you have to clean the food i mean it's just not efficient you don't not want to spend all. this amount of time well, as a pro player you shouldn't have to yeah you shouldn't have to yeah shouldn't be a standard yeah um i guess next topic is life as a t- top 
uh, level pro versus a bottom uh, tier pro. Um, I mean, we kind of discussed it, but you might have more sponsorship obligations out of the team. Oh because yeah, because you're you're the main figurehead. Oh yeah, it depends on which team you are at. If you're like yeah. a popular team, let's say Fnatic, I mean, you're probably gonna yeah. have to do way more content slash sponsorship yes. than on the bottom tier team. Yep. I mean, you you look at like social media. So some of the bottom tier teams <laughs> they make one video per year, yeah. and the video is a joke. I mean, or 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 you're immortals and you know you make a tweet and then get ratioed by Fudge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is his current. Uh, Th that like, one is the. That's that's you're dead. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, they're down in the dumps <laughs> when you're getting ratioed by the Fudge factor, but um. No, I, I mean, he, he finds that hilarious to, mm. to, to do that. But a good one. I, I agree that um, it's it's pretty weird for sure. I think that ah, top tier pros, depending again on what team you're on, you're going to have more content that you have to do and more, you know, sponsorship plugs and all this other stuff, right? Generally, it's going to be that way, yeah. which is kind of weird. Um, but also at the same time, not. Uh, sometimes maybe you get cuts of it. Um, depending on how it's woven into your contract. Oh, cuts! Uh, I never heard of that. Okay, well, sometimes you'll you'll get cuts of it. Mm. Um, depending on how maybe things are woven into your contract. If you're a bottom tier pro, job security. Uh, job pretty security, much one on one. Yeah. Big and are meets. you best friends with the star of the team? Yeah, you're best friend with your manager who is yeah. gonna create the roster. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you are <laughs> okay. Yep. Next next year you're here again. Yeah. Don't worry. So. That that's pretty much what it is being like a bottom tier player. You're always in danger unless someone else is really fucking up. And if someone else is really fucking up, well now your job becomes to just not fuck up. Mm -hmm. And then you save for another year. Yeah. You don't have to actually get good. No, you just gotta you gotta play your cards right. Actually I had a YouTube video on this. Uh it was like LS Logic League of Cards mm -hmm. years ago, and it still rings true to modern day League of Legends. Um Top tier pro players, I think a lot of people think that their lives... Well, sometimes I hear stories of pro players that literally all they do is play their games, barely check their phone, show up for matches, and that's it. <laughs> I, I No, I've heard of these stories. Okay. They are so detached from YouTube and Reddit, and it's it's almost that's hard to like, believe. It's, it's maybe like more Asian, maybe? No, because this was a Western pro. Really? Yeah, it's a Western okay. pro. Because like, you have a lot of... Um, so there's like the schedule that you usually follow as a pro player, right? Mm. You have to come to the office at a certain time yep. and you have to like be there at least for a certain time yep. and then you leave, right? Well, sometimes pro players are exempt from these rules. Like the top oh, ones. Oh, the top ones. Oh, yeah, like the stars. The yeah. top ones. Pe people uh, can come late. People can... If it's mandatory that you, like everyone has to show up for a meeting, Yeah. not mandatory for that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it mandatory to be awake by 12? They're well, still sleeping at three. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's um, because there's there's basically nothing that you can do mm -hmm. because they're I mean, you can't like you can bench them. Well, yeah, you, know? you would think I mean, that, you know, you know, nowadays maybe the stuff them, has changed. Maybe. But yeah. Yeah. Mm, how far? There's yeah. also like the, the stream uh, scream schedule, right? Which is like, let's say the schedules are weird. Ah, they're weird because um. The the other very inefficient or like uh, I don't know. So I've heard the NA uh, now does just five games. Yeah, and they only scrim three days a week. Yeah, that's not a lot of scrim games. That that's is because really like you have to horrendous. Know people don't know, but like a team can have like a boom in, mm -hmm. in a day, and then all the games are just a waste. You know how many times this still happens that a team just cancels scrims because it's oh it happens all the time. Oh yeah, I yeah. mean. I can tell you like a famous meme. G two, I think in two thousand nineteen they had like this famous meme which is like if if uh if they go four zero they're in game five, they're gonna pull out like a random champ and just play. Mm -hmm. It's kinda funny. Um But yeah, I don't know. It's uh it's not good. Yeah. It's not good, it's not good. Um It's fine. So I mean I think uh <sighs> Five yet, so I don't know Europe's thing. So Korea is still pretty, pretty weird. Korea will still do three, still three games three, at two, three, schemes. three games at seven, and then three games at eleven. Uh, that's that's the and then some teams on occasion will quadra block. They'll that's, keep playing, yeah. and there will be no solo queue time. Um, I but don't think that's good. Like, no, it's, I, it's I, definitely I not good. Definitely, it's definitely not sure. good. I I think um I think you could have two blocks of five. 
uh, which I think would be fine, but it, it really depends on how well you're using it. Yeah, but you have to you have to note, right? Y- when 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 you talk about like five games, this is actually like minimum five hours, guys. I from my experience, like mm-hmm. one game could take over an hour, but not because of gameplay, because of review time. <laughs> the review can listen, take longer than the game. Or the pick ban, especially if T1 Academy. Oh, banning. the pick ban. <laughs> or yeah. picking, yeah. Uh, you know how many times it happens? <laughs> like you go through the whole draft and then it dodges <laughs> last second. They're like, oh, we want to remake this pick. Then you do it again in the dodge again, and I'm like, oh sh. This is yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy rough. how many times it happens still. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's never going to be fixed. I mean, sometimes a game can be paused in five minutes and then mm-hmm. the next one in 10 and then the next one in 10 again. Yep. And then you have five games in like three hours. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, it's uh, 5 p.m. We're already done with scrims. Okay, time to go home and uh, do nothing for the rest of the day. Yeah, It's rough. No, I think, I think scrims are really poorly utilized in general. Um, I think people's ideas of practice are they really They do poorly. always the same. I can tell you that much. They, they, they always, always do, do the same, same thing. There's yep. no creativity. Yep. It's like sometimes a player pulls up a random champion and it's like, yeah, and it's just so No, it's pointless. rough. It's rough. It's, it's definitely rough. So um, the, the other thing about scrims, right, is how people go about practicing and what they bring up in review and all this other stuff and – what do they need to work on and how do they work on it? Now, I find it always so intriguing that people always say they're working on things and mistakes and all this. But then years keep passing and yeah, yeah. same mistakes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No intent behind their gameplay and all this other stuff. Well, ProView is an interesting thing mm-hmm. where ProView now lets us see into what is, what are these players actually focusing on. The bottom tier players probably wish Pro, Pro, ProView wouldn't exist right now. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. You can I mean I'm not saying it's like easy to be in their shoe, right? Mm-hmm. And just play because obviously you're playing under some sort of pressure and environment change mm-hmm. and maybe they're not like the most comfortable in their setups right. if they're in studio and stuff. I definitely uh, acknowledge that those things are like uh factors. But some of the players like th- they're still way like not even like passable, you know? They're still like mm-hmm so bad and like you can also just not watch like mechanically but like their intent in gameplay and it's just like or, or, or what you, are we doing or you can see that, that, that there's actually no possible way that they have enough information to make whatever choice they're making yeah there's no possible way yep. even if you make the argument that they're getting comms from their teammates because probably you can't hear the comms mm-hmm. Even if they're getting comms, there's nothing that can possibly. I would be rather related. I would rather trust myself than and trust a comm well, yeah, from a teammate. True, true, yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Uh, comms from teammates are delayed, while the information you can receive for right. yourself is way faster. Yep, and yep, accurate. Yep, yep. So yep. sometimes it even makes you hesitate. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. So uh, sometimes you lose out on opportunities. I mean, you don't know how many times I hear a call from my teammate, and I'm just in my head, I'm yep. like, this is bad. And then it's like I have a, I have to make a choice, right? Do I follow or do I just don't follow? And then yep how to hear it afterwards right yep it's uh it, it's definitely rough it's definitely definitely rough so i think pro views are going to be one of the the new interesting focal points that will happen going forward where now there's a lot of ways to look at things from a new perspective because before when the camera is like panning all over the screen you can't always see a landing face super detailed oh yeah you also don't know exactly what they're thinking but I firmly believe that generally the mouse is like an extension of their brain. Yeah. Like yeah, in, yeah, in a way, right? Yeah, of yeah. of what they're really thinking. So mouse is really interesting. Um I only watch the mouse. Usually. Right, right. And and all the mo- fundamentals yeah. are something that should be super, 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 super stressed, right? And people will say that like faker um F- faker is probably like the example of like super high APM. Uh, player oh, that yeah. people think you don't need to move that fast even if you don't and then they'll cite like how chovy doesn't move that fast or something like that even if you don't need to move that fast right it's not an argument against it it's like the people that say that like you don't need to use f keys mm-hmm. even though f keys are objectively faster mm-hmm. right it's not, it's not an argument it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you can list you know pro player in china that doesn't use f keys or clicks on the map and you're claiming that it's preference that doesn't matter man it's it, it's just actually faster it's better so it the, these people you can't you can't reach like it, it it's just i i don't know they're like aliens like you can't uh i don't even know where to begin with those people but proview i think will be an interesting tool in helping a lot of people who can get better get better 
But at the same time, I think it's also just going to expose a lot of people who are actually not very competent mm-hmm. at the game from a fundamental level. Yeah, I mean, people before already, like, it's not just this year or last year. I mean, you had, like, probes available from LPL Korea, so people could, like, use them last year already or years before, I think. Mm-hmm. And just because, like, a player is looking at the probe, doesn't that actually necessarily mean they're going to not improve. Mm-hmm. Like, I laugh every time a silver or gold player tells me that they bought Provo and they're watching Provo and I'm just like, great, it's not going to help you at all. It's just <laughs> not. You don't still buy it. Yeah, if you want to waste your money. Com. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Premium. I mean, I, I'm just saying. It, it's it's, it's Yeah, Provo, um, super low MMR players probably aren't going... Well, the most important thing that you can learn... Well, nah. I mean, I think that there are going to be people that can learn from ProView simply by mimicking it alone. And I think people don't understand oh, yeah. mimicking it is all that you need to do, but you need to find the people that are good at ProView that, and mimic That's it. the best way to that's, actually That's improve. it. That's the best way to improve uh, is to mimic. At the beginning. Like, yeah. I can tell you that when I started, uh, when, I, when I tried to get like a bit better at Age of mm-hmm. Empires 2, I was looking at the pro view of their best yeah, player. Yeah, that's and, StarCraft and, and, too. And everything. Yep. Th- that's how I decided yep. like how yep. I'm going to get really bad at the game. Right. So it, it it's pretty interesting because in, in StarCraft, you would have first person VODs of a pro player, right? And you could just look at your own and look at theirs and be like, wow, they're a lot faster. They're a lot more precise. Their mouse is always in the center of the screen. And they know what they're doing. They, they know what they're doing. They know every like unit, their scri- everything. Everything's just clean. Yeah. Like, it, it looks like a language, like right? A it looks like they're, yeah. right, they're, they're talking with their screen. Um, and that's what you want to get to. Uh, and you want to make it look like other people can also talk or communicate with your screen in, in, a, in a way that's, like, digestible. Mm-hmm. Um and sometimes it will have like very frantic mood, like Faker, right? Faker is still digestible if you know it, it well. If you can play oh, the game at a high absolutely. level, absolutely. Yeah, well, his his screams really, really, really digestible. Like, you know, a lot of people complain when they watch him. Is like, oh, my eyes start hurting, my head starts spinning, and this, uh, uh, and I'm like watching him, like, it's fine. It's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I it's like fine. It. <laughs> yeah, I like it. it's nice. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so it's, it's definitely interesting. Now there's the other thing I, I comment on, which is like solo queue versus, uh, competitive pro views are different. Someone solo queue, uh, you're, you're an example of it. Yeah. You spam F keys in solo queue, but not in scrims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and b- you know, because you can either be zoned in more or just, you know, you don't need the information yeah, that yeah, you would yeah. be looking for normally, but like stuff like that is interesting. But for most people getting better, it's it's difficult for them because they don't want to just mimic because trying to mimic in the first place is really hard mm-hmm. and everyone wants you know get fit quick pills. Mm-hmm. Um, it but takes time. It it's takes like a, a lot of process. yeah. It takes a lot of. I time. basically mimicked my brother's gameplay to get better, right? Yeah, that's what you have to do. Pretty you just much. mimic. Yeah. You just mimic. Um, mimicking is all you. So you get a hold of someone that you know is really really good at uh, like a pro view, known for good mechanics, right? Yeah. Um, and then you just try to mimic it, and you just you just keep going like does it look like it and then the problem comes like what if they don't think that it looks different Mm -hmm. than the other person well now now you're getting into a really weird area yeah but you have to track your own metrics right like one of the things i pointed out to you um looking at like the the solo queue history right like your silas average cs yeah in roughly the same amount of games is one point one entire cs behind chovy yeah which is insane yeah because of that mmr he's way better to, to get oh to get one whole cs higher yeah he's way better is so it's so unfathomably yeah, hard yeah, yeah. it's so hard the difference between someone who has six point like six cs per minute and seven mm-hmm. at a super high level it's so it's so stupid. Yeah, probably for me, like if I wanted to be re- to like to get it higher, I would have to play with like that in my mind. Yeah. For like a lot more games and just for yeah. solely like practice that for yeah. a long period of time, then I would probably like get close. Probably. Yeah. But it's it's yeah, it's, it's crazy. really really hard. No, I, I watch him a lot, and it's like the, his patience skills and just like everything is just way better than mine yeah. on, on the champion specifically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Salas is like a bit gimmicky with his passive. And then if he gets really behind, he starts dealing no damage to minions. Yeah. So you actually can miss a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. There's some, there. I mean, yeah. I, it, pro, pro, view, pro view will definitely be interesting in like metrics, metric tracking and other stuff. 
think all of this is going to be hard, but it, going forward, it does seem like people are on the right track. But I mean, just today on Reddit, there was like the complaint that post game analysis isn't there. Oh, and then a lot of people were chiming in on Twitter. I chimed in myself yeah. that true analytical content doesn't sell. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It just I doesn't. I was around for how many years and I only blew up in the last two. And I attribute a lot of my blow up to my spectacle, theatrics, mm -hmm. right? Going over the top um, with voice or, you know, um, using a lot of emotion in, in speech or like doing comical things on stream combined with what I was already saying. Yeah. Um, and it, it it's very, very, very hard. People don't want to actually just watch like pure analysis but then the other gripe that i have with it is that just because someone says things in a condensed structured way doesn't mean it's right mm -hmm. and that's another big problem as well and i think this is a problem that a lot of people could be afraid with in general in the public with releasing content is because if you release something and one pro player reviews it and is just like well that's not right this isn't right this is it starts getting really scary um, and so it's, it's easier to opt out of that. Mm. So, yeah. Um, I have a question for mm -hmm. you. Maybe mm -hmm. let's say, let's say you're a player. Let's say you're me, mm -hmm. just a random example. And let's say you just ended your time on Fnatic and you have off season. Yeah. Just randomly. You're a player that has off season. Mm -hmm. What do you think a player should do in off season? Uh, are they capable of streaming? Most of them aren't, right? Most of them aren't, yeah. Yeah, most of them aren't. What should they do in off-season? Uh, like, what's the general I'm, well, I, best see, thing this to do is in the thing is, I think, it, I think it's case by case, right? If they're already a player. I think it's yeah. case by case. Let's say you're already a player. If you're already a player, the sad reality, I think, is you have to get really good at playing politics. Politics. You have to. I mean, you want to you want to survive, right? Yeah. Unless you're already a top player. Mm. If you're already a top player, then you should probably keep trying to get better, mm. right? But most want to just vacation. Yeah, it's most really go gross. on a vacation. It's really, 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 really gross. Oof. Um, most just vacay, but <laughs> they come to the, they go on vacation and they come back and it's like they fly they fly to mm. like uh to like. G Germany or something, yeah. right? And they haven't even played a single solo game. It's oh, like that, that's it's a common yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah that's, like really, that's really, really common. Yeah. Or people that say they haven't played League in three months. Yeah, yeah. It's they don't play League for like two or three months. It's oh, you're gross. It's, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that pretty much goes over um, most. What are the problems? Why, why do players pl uh, fall off? Oh, like... Why are some players good for a few seasons? They're considered the best ever, and then they just randomly fall off, and they're never heard of again. I mean, I think they just lose. Um, they lose the. Uh, they lose the drive that was making them stay at. The, or, so, uh, one of my hypotheses, uh, right? We'll, we'll use Live Sandbox's mm -hmm. top laner summit, right? Yeah. A lot of people don't know this, but Summit was in Afrika, Afrika's academy team, for a really long time. And Korean teams are usually known for playing with their trainees a lot or all this other stuff, right? Keen was widely regarded as the best Korean top laner for about two years straight, right? Keen was like, Keen was Chovy before Chovy. That was mm -hmm. pretty much how Keen was, right? Mm -hmm. Afrika was going to win. It was all going to be centered around Keen. Um, and Summit was under Keen. And then Summit leaves Afrika and then debuts in LCK. And a lot of the narrative, and even from most pro players that surrounded him and stuff, is he was a monster in top lane. Like, it was just, it was him and Keen just mm -hmm. annihilating every, or like, even if he didn't have the best stats, if you go into the games and watch the VODs and watch what's happening, Summit was just, fuck, he was something else, like, in the game. Since then, it's not the same, right? So, what happened? Um, the way, the only way that I can imagine this is that he went directly from that environment to a lax environment mm -hmm. and what was making him so good no longer was there. Mm -hmm. Like the, the constant repetition and everything. Right. And so slowly he glides off. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Right. Like the same way how, okay, you have your current body frame and weight and everything. Right. Yeah. If someone just came and kidnapped you. Yeah. Right. 
and then put you in some compound somewhere and you had to go to the gym yeah every single day and there's a specific chef and all this other stuff and there's you know a personal trainer there and you're forced to do it every single day for like six months yeah you're gonna be convicted. your whole body is gonna transform right yeah, yeah. and then one day you know you're Someone comes and bags you up again, right? Yeah. You don't know what's going on. You're in a truck and you're just thrown back into your old life. Yeah. First, it's going to be like, maybe you still do a little bit of stuff, right? Um, because you've been doing it, right? Time. Slowly over time, you regress. Yeah. Because it's not really what you wanted. And it wasn't really you. It was Other your factors. environment. It was your yeah, environment yeah. Yeah. that forced you to be that way. And so I think that once the force is gone, most players show their true desires but i think a lot of people fall out of love for the game and mm -hmm. when you fall out of love for the game it starts becoming harder to play when it yeah. starts becoming harder to play it starts becoming harder to want to learn new things mm -hmm. you just sort of want to turn a blind eye to new things new material and you just want to not believe it's there kind of want to be lazy in a way you just want to be lazy yeah and this happens to most players yeah but what about Mm, when when I watch some of the players, I just feel like that over time mm. the game has progressed so much, and the new the, like the new players are so much like better than them that th they fall off because of that. Well, not, not because of like their drive or. This is the thing I'm talking. Yeah, this is the thing I'm talking about now. Is like a lot of people they ask me why I keep harping on about like a lot of the things I talk about, like enchanter supports, mage supports, and like yeah. all this other. Sh and it's not for modern day pros. Look, I've realized real quick. These players don't give a fuck, man. They just don't give a shit. Yeah, slap the thumbkin. But the amateur players, the 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds, they're looking for every fucking edge they can get. The same way that when you were 15, 16, or whatever fucking crowny messaging me on Facebook, yeah. right? It's the same fucking thing. The cycle of life's repeating itself. So nowadays, a lot of the, the new amateurs, right? I'll get fucking DMs all the time, whether it be on Discord or it's on fucking Twitter or something um, or in Twitch chat, right? It's the, it's the same cycle. Mm -hmm. And they're the next gen because they're going to do everything the modern day pros are doing, but they're also going to look to try to recognize what are they not doing. Mm -hmm. Let me do that. Yeah. That's it. Because that's how you separate. Yeah. You don't aim for the top. You aim for fucking above. Above, yeah. yeah. But that's okay. not just league. That's anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You wanna maybe talk about LCK, LCS, LCS, L L LSE really mm, fast, or no? Maybe for next episode. Yeah, next episode. Well, uh, next episode we might have a guest. Hmm. We might have Nyokin. Okay. You guys who? don't know who Nyokin. No, you guys don't know who Nyokin is, but uh, we might have Nyokin. We'll try to figure out what the topics are gonna be. But I know a lot of people have asked us to get guests. It's kind of right. It's it's weird right now to get remote guests with the setup that we have. Yeah. Because I don't know how we figure that out. Mm -hmm. We need like headsets or we, because we have to call with them, right? Yeah. Um. So there's stuff that we would Probably have to headsets, finagle. Yeah. So until that, we're limited to real life guests. Uh. So yeah, we'll probably just get Nyokin. And that'll be interesting. Nyokin, Nyokin's like... Nyokin's like the hieroglyphs you find on the wall. Mm -hmm. He's 36. Yeah. So, but he's one of, he's like the Gen Zero pro gamers. Mm -hmm. So the 1998 world championship. Well, <laughs> if he's, if he's going to be here next time, then we, we have to ask him about the dishwashing story. That one. Make sure to ask him that guys. Yeah. Okay. He'll have a speech. We'll, about yeah. It. We'll, we'll come up with topics for it. Yeah. No big deal. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I guess that was it for this right. for today. See you guys on. Thank you all. Yeah, on the next episode. For watching. Make sure to like, subscribe on YouTube. True. As usual. True. For those who came to this point. True. All right. Goodbye, everyone. See you.